Lifetime's 2010 movie, The Pregnancy Pact, is a modern made-for-TV classic, depicting the real-life media frenzy that gave birth to the titular phrase just two years prior, when a group of Massachusetts teenagers reported to have secretly planned their simultaneous pregnancies, which sparked nationwide concerns over pop culture's supposed glamorization of teen pregnancy and motherhood. It seems like inadequate sex education was the more likely culprit, but frankly, Frankly, it's just refreshing to look back on a time when society's illogical fear-mongering was based on TV shows rather than transphobia. And sure enough, it turns out the kids watching Gossip Girl actually were more likely to be exposed to a sex offender than the kids attending a family drag show. Oh, this country is truly entering its dark age. And like the lost city of Atlantis, slowly sinking into the sea. By the way, can't wait to see how conservatives blame the queers for climate change once they can no longer deny that it's happening, that is. But just like the issue of transgender people using public restrooms, the pregnancy pact was actually non-existent. However, thanks to the rise of the 24-hour news cycle, Lifetime was able to create its most unintentionally satirical look inside the minds of teenage girls, who apparently see the human uterus as the ultimate tool of deception and social status, supported by sensational headlines, false statistics, and out-of-control parties in broad daylight where the acting is as terrible as the cups are empty. So pour yourself a drink and poke holes in all of your condoms because you're about to get knocked up by the made-for-TV madness of the late 2000s and another abstinence-only installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive in to our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web, and we break it apart like the truth when it's being reported on by a non-journalist who thinks they're a journalist, so that we can look at each individual clip and decide if there's actually a pact saying we have to all give birth in the same trimester, or if we were just bored and wanted to get freaky with each other. I could have done that different when I said it, but I'll try and make up for it. But first, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more Lifetime clip breakdowns like this. It's been a moment since we've done Lifetime here on the main channel. We watch them often on Patreon. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. Two every week. Why aren't you turning on notifications and being the first one to watch out of all of your friend group who are pressuring you to have babies. Now, I remember the pregnancy pack dominating the headlines when I was like a junior, senior in high school. And this news story took place in Gloucester, Massachusetts, which was not far from where I grew up. So I was very surprised after all of that nationwide media coverage to look back and realize, oh, turns out there was never any pregnancy pack. In reality, the actual teenagers involved with this story had just privately promised to help each other raise raise their babies after finding out that they happen to become pregnant at the same time. But as this movie does accurately touch upon, the real issue that got less attention is how the spike in pregnancies of this area was due mainly to conservative curriculum around sexual health and wellness. Abstinence only, sex education, as we know, does not really work in preventing pregnancies because kids can figure out how to have sex very easily. Figuring out how to do it safely and healthfully and knowing when you're ready and the consequences that may arise is something that it's really good to teach <laughs> from a place of non-judgment, but that's not what we get here. We'll definitely come back to that. But first, I wanna take a minute to let you know about the sponsor of today's video, MD Hair, who I also need to thank for getting me started on my journey to healthier, more beautiful, and thicker hair. I come from a hair care background and I am very impressed with the way that MD Hair approaches the hair regrowth science with their custom regrowth kit, a combination of products such as their serum, shampoo, conditioner, and supplements that support healthy hair growth from within. The most unique part about MD Hair is the way they customize each treatment kit to your needs. They have technology that analyzes the results of a quiz you can use on their website, as well as an actual photo of your scalp. I was so excited to have my scalp photo 
analyzed by their artificial intelligence and know that the products being sent to me were designed specifically to help my unique case. Because although hair loss is incredibly common, it's far different for each individual. For example, someone with genetic age-related hair loss is going to receive a different supplement than a 30-year-old new parent with postpartum hair loss. Somebody with a sensitive scalp needs a serum that helps treat and protect that area of the body. I feel so good knowing that I'm taking a supplement that's helping support my hair growth journey from within, but what I love most is having a serum that instantly makes my hair feel better and stronger and smoother while also helping my scalp feel more comfortable. I don't mind building a routine that's going to show me my best results over time, but I want to feel like I'm doing something proactive every day, which is exactly how I feel when I am applying my MD Customized Hair Care Serum and taking my customized hair care wellness supplement, which I know will support the overall bodily systems that contribute to having the best hair on the block. Right away I can tell my hair is more pleasant to the touch and I see more volume in the mirror. Plus, I know that within two to four months I'll be seeing the full results of my new hair care routine. These products contain over 100 natural ingredients across the board. Mother Nature knows what my head needs. Customize your hair regrowth treatment with MD Hair. Use my promo code NICK70 to get your first month of customized products at 70% off. Thank you so much to MD Hair for getting me on my way to a thicker, healthier looking head of hair and for sponsoring today's video. Just a disclaimer, Lifetime makes it clear at the beginning that although they use actual news footage in this movie, and it's set against a real set of news reports in 2008, some of the locations and public figures are real, but any other character similarities are purely coincidental. It's like, I mean, that's a lot of stuff that you admit to not being coincidental, but I get what they're saying. The teenagers themselves are just made up, and if one of the teenagers happened to have red hair and her name was Sarah, like nine out of 12 people in all of Massachusetts, then don't come for me. That's what Lifetime is saying. The movie is inspired by a true story. Just look. It's in a shocking story about sex and status. Should the school system, the media, or society shoulder any of the responsibility for what happened? Um, okay, one thing we're not gonna do is blame society. Society has always had perfectly reasonable expectations for women. As long as they are smart, but not man smart, nurturing, but not clingy, hypersexual, but not slutty. Oh, and they better figure all of that out by age 13, which is when grown men would like to start objectifying them at family barbecues. When teen girls are acting out, we don't blame society. We blame the teen girls themselves for having menstrual cycles, I suppose. Your fault. P.S. You can also always tell you're watching a Lifetime movie from the new millennium because of this cheap on-screen text with Adobe stock font that never feels quite right for the subject matter. The title card will be in 14 point marker felt and it reads the life and death of Harriet Tubman. I'm like, okay, I guess they wanted it to look like this was the beginning of a really serious episode of Rugrats. Welcome anyway to Gloucester, Massachusetts, a small fishing community. I'm just guessing fishing. There's a bridge connecting it to the rest of Massachusetts. And it's a small conservative town where according to these establishing Shot. The kids are just in the hallway canoodling full time. That's their major, minor, and extracurricular business. We jump in and meet one of our main character Sarah's friends, a member of the pregnancy group. I don't know any of these girls' names. There's a lot of nameless characters in this. Like they have names, but there's never mentioned enough to become established. None of them have distinct personalities. And a lot of them, when you look on IMDb, don't even have photos uploaded. So it's like, I'm hopeless. But the character, their self, is quite hopeful, as you'll see here. So you're just gonna pee on the tip here, right? Or you can use the plastic cup that's in the bathroom and you can just stick the tip inside, okay? She just went to the bathroom. Why is that part exciting to you, Barnessa? Did you think she was gonna piss on that pregnancy stick out in the middle of the most generously windowed, least private looking, and most open blinds nurse's office in all of America's school system? That would be gross. The hormones from her pregnancy pee could splatter on that eyesight exam chart. And the school staff counts on that to separate the kids who need eyeglasses from the kids with learning disabilities. I heard Sarah Kay from English class has both both. And that's why we post anti-Semitic bumper stickers on her Facebook wall. <laughs> Being a teenager is f 
Out comes Barnessa, I guess we're calling her, with her test, which apparently she needs adult help to read. You're not pregnant. Oh, okay. I agree, Nurse Half Ponytail, that reaction was unexpected. But I also didn't think you were gonna grab both ends of that pea-soaked home pregnancy test with your bare hands, and then set it down on top of the filing cabinet where we usually leave the asthma inhaler permission slips. She's like, hmm, maybe she's just disappointed because I can't lock this in my little girl pregnant pea drawer. The kids love it when I do that. Like, I'm sorry, the day just started, but I can already tell that this school is weird. Even by 2010's Massachusetts standards, where the teenagers would dress like 17th century puritanical settlers who somehow won a shopping spree at American Eagle. There are so many long sleeves, peasant blouses, and layered tank tops in this movie. It's like, we get it. Delia's was in at the time, but you know that the real girls, the real girls who were sexually active were wearing the same corduroy blazer most days. I'm talking about me now. Concerned about this pregnancy test that she just administered, the nurse goes and tells the principal and the vice principal. Principal Bald Eagle and then the vice principal is John, I think. But those teachers, we gotta talk to the students. We meet our main character, Sarah, who has this pretty red hair, always in a perfectly styled different look. She's excited to go spend some alone time with her boyfriend, Jesse, even though he's like, you're gonna get me in trouble. But first she drops by and says hi to her dad, who I guess works on a fishing boat. That's why I thought they had fishing boats. They show fishing boats. But then later he's like, I was waiting all day in line, waiting for an unemployment office job. I think it's referring to like the 2008 recession, that he's like unemployed, but maybe he just takes like day labor on a boat, loading lobsters up, lobster. Then they go inside the diner that the family owns and say hi to Sarah's mom, who is very proper. She does remind me of a lot of wealthier Massachusetts moms from a conservative background. Her name is something something, Lorraine. Oh, and the family's last name is Dugan. I'm like, okay, Sarah Dugan. Sorry about your unplanned pregnancy, Dugans. But enough of this coastal Massachusetts town, we have a Massachusetts transplant who is the seeker of justice and truth, played by Thora Birch, who you might remember from a lot of popular childhood roles, such as American Beauty, or my favorite to talk about, Hocus Pocus, which we reviewed here on this channel. But here she is talking news to an HD camcorder. We have two big stories in the news today. A woman running for president just picked up a big state in the primary. The other is a 16 year old girl pregnant, shopping for a crib. Now, I know what life I'd want. Ugh, I hate that those are my only two life choices. I wanted to be one of those trade show bikini models who gets to sit on the front of a speedboat. Then again, those convention centers get really chilly and my nipples are very reactive. Ooh, can I at least choose the life of a woman who isn't the target of online abuse and death threats? Uh, Google search returned no results. Fine, I guess I choose to just die in utero. I don't need all this drama. Sorry, ladies, I'm with you in spirit. I guess it's just like that famous quote. You either get pregnant early enough to be a 16 year old Jamie Lynn Spears, or you wait long enough to become the target of ageist sexism like Hillary Clinton. I know it sounded cool in the Batman movie, but that version of the quote was reserved for men. And I guess bat men. Men who dress like bats? Seems a little lopsided in terms of what's considered toxic and crazy, but God bless America, I guess. The movie makes a couple direct references to Jamie Lynn Spears, who really shook the pop culture news sphere at the time when she became pregnant at age 16, leading to the cancellation of her hit Nickelodeon show, Zoe 101. But a lot of other examples were cited as potential sources of this bike and teenage pregnancies. The MTV show, Teen Mom, Secret Life of the American Teenager. But if that pregnancy spike is happening in an area where the school refuses to offer contraception or even educate people about birth control, you're making a bit of a mental leap by blaming the shows. It's like when Columbine was blamed on video games and like death metal, okay, or the fact that my dad has an unlocked gun safe and I don't know what Prozac is. Not me specifically, please. I know what Prozac is. It's up in these guts. Back to you, Thora Birch, who as a journalist, no, video blogger, is named Sydney Bloom, which I think is just lovely. But who is your role model? That's the question of the day at teenup.net. Post a comment and I'll be back at you tomorrow. 
I don't want to leave a comment. I already told you my role model is any model who's wearing a bikini and sitting on the front of a boat with a captain's hat. And once I can find pasties thick enough to safeguard my illegal woman nipples, I'm gonna get there. All three of us are gonna get there. All three of us. Also, was it just me? Or was this online news show 15 seconds long? Maybe Sydney was ahead of her time. If you turn that camera sideways, you just made a, a perfectly under-researched and covertly sexist TikTok. She's gonna do well in t about 20 years, I can tell, Sydney. So yeah, the publication is teenup.net which she runs in New York with this friend of hers wearing that hat. And she's like, look it, there have been 10 pregnancies in my town in the last year, as opposed to four the previous school year. She just is like, all of a sudden, like, I'm gonna go to Gloucester and get some news on all of this news, even though you could just get your news from the news since they have probably better sources, but whatever. She's the only one who thinks to look into this, even though the newspapers already wrote about it. The moms are gossiping at the diner about the kids who are getting pregnant. But of course, Sarah's mom is like, that's not our jizz, jizzness. That's not our business. We're just here to help the kids and not judge them. Sarah's like, well, I'm going to hang out at Jesse's house. That's her boyfriend. And the mom friend is like, look who's getting in line to be pregnant next. It's like, don't say that about my daughter ever. Anyway, the next day, that girl who had the negative pregnancy test in the opening scene is sitting with the school nurse who is like, you're pregnant. And the girl is visibly excited when she leaves the room. I'm I'm confused, like, did she just go to the nurse's office for a pregnancy test every day until it tested positive? I don't understand what the timeline was there, or wouldn't the nurse be like, why do you keep doing this? Can you come back a weekly? Rather, you know, like, you're not gonna notice for three months or something. But the girls are psyched because apparently out of the four people in Sarah's friend group, all three of them except her are pregnant now. I feel this big rush. I hope we all have girls. Having a little girl to hang out with and be my best friend. And we'd get little matching outfits and I'd paint her fingernails. Okay, fine. But then we're gonna put all three of them in the same playpen and start a baby fight club, right? Guys, I wasn't joking about that. I already picked out my baby's entrance song. It's gonna be Fighter by Christina Aguilera, but the kids bop version, obviously. So it's kind of more about eating vegetables. Helps my bones grow stronger. Boobos heal a little bit quicker. Calcium and fiber. I'm a carrot and broccoli biter. Oh, I'm also gonna teach her how to hold a knife. The most recently pregnant girl goes home and you would think it's gonna tell her mom the good news, but she's more of a my mom's not home type of kid. picked up an extra shift, make myself a pizza. But mom, you wouldn't even have to work all of these extra shifts if you didn't insist on installing that custom stone fire pizza oven in the former bedroom of my recently dead brother. Whatever, I hate this house. That's me tossing pizza dough, if you didn't get that. The other more pregnant girl and more curled hair goes home to see your grandma and the it seemingly dropout or above high school age boyfriend who put a baby in her. John, don't let her smoke. Leave me alone, just one drag. Besides, the high blood pressure is good for the baby. It means my heart is pumping nutrients through the umbilical cord even faster. So it's like supercharging the skeetus full of those pizza sticks I had for lunch today. We don't learn about health school stuff, whatever. In any case, what is John gonna do about it? This is clearly the first and most formal cigarette he's ever smoked. You can always tell when an actor doesn't know their way around a Marlboro because they hold it like the wealthy, abusive boy friend in the Titanic movie. Also probably the real Titanic. There were a lot of bad old timey boyfriends that went down with that ship. It's one of the lesser discussed positive aspects of that horrible tragedy, just saying. Sarah is sitting on a dock with Jesse. You can tell this isn't shot in Massachusetts. It's just prettier. Jesse has thoughts about all of this pregnancy. I don't know why you hang out with those girls. They're all skanky. <laughs> no, they're not. Snow. Don't be knocking my girls with big snub. Feminism achieved. Before the Me Too movement, there was, don't be knocking my girls, you big snob, which also works great for stopping a bully who's making fun of the gay kids at music camp by transferring the target onto your back. I don't know how the screenwriter pictured a real teenager saying that line, but this poor actress needed like four years at Juilliard to even have a chance at making it sound authentic. I would ask the director, can I swap that line out for something that feels a little more natural to my character, such as stop thy mock 
fuckery, Jesse. To those skanks, my heart remains fervent. None of these characters attempt to have that recognizable Massachusetts accent whatsoever, and I don't blame them. It's hard to fake consistently, even for professional actors, and even from people who live in the area. I'm talking to you directly, Michaela Nagara. She'll be like, it's hard to find a good mascara that I'm sure will last through halftime of the Red Sox game. Like, okay, little Edie, settle down. Grey Gardens is closed. Regardless, Jesse here is like, I'm gonna play on the Red Sox and you'll be my wife. And she's like, you wanna marry me? He wants to go to college for baseball, I guess. I don't know how that works. I guess you have to go to college for communications and then the MLB scouts you. The school nurse is talking to the principal and vice principal about the new pregnancy result and the fact that the newspaper is saying this spike in pregnancies is not really a school problem. She believes otherwise because the school doesn't offer any sort of contraceptives like condoms or education about birth control. And she's like, can I have your support when I go and talk to the school board about offering these things? And the principal is like, no, you can have support from your own bra and that's it, lady, get out. So she doesn't feel like the school is actually gonna help the kids with this. Also, the mom is like rightfully pointed out to be the owner of a restaurant, not a school expert. So I don't know why she's in charge of deciding who gets to wear a condom. The dad comes home, they eat tuna casserole because apparently in Massachusetts, you just live off fish product. He's complaining about not having a job. And then Sarah's like, whatever, I'm going to my boyfriend's house. And the dad is like, wait a minute, you're not going there alone. And the mom is like, oh, it's fine. She's a good girl, nothing will happen. Cut to them laying in bed naked. Sarah is talking to Jesse about how she's worried about him going to college because he'll graduate way before her and they won't get to spend every day together. And he's like, yeah, but I gotta go to college to be scouted by the MLB. He didn't use an accent, I'm using the accent. They're about to have sex but they don't because the dad comes in downstairs. And just like that, a new force to be reckoned with rolled into town, rolled into Gloucester. We're here in Gloucester. Looks nice, right? Looks friendly. Don't let it fool you. Only one bridge connected to the rest of the world. It's very conservative. Ugh, they sound so unwelcoming. Although you did sort of just plow through a busy school crosswalk while getting some shaky B-roll of the back of that statue. So I don't know, maybe we can meet them in the middle of the aisle and just like look out the front windshield every few minutes. Just like check our surroundings a little bit sometimes too. She's recording and posting simultaneously, I guess. They didn't have live streams at this time, so I don't know what's up. She sits in front of a lighthouse and is like, I only lived here for two years. I didn't have many friends, but I did have one boyfriend who I haven't spoken to since I left. Cut to the vice principal, John, yeah. And you can tell by the look on his face, he's the ex-boyfriend she's describing. The whole community, by the way, is Christian and Bible f***ing. They f the Bible between the pages. No, no, that would count as some sort of protection and they don't want that. Unsheathed penis, unsheathed penis. That's what God wants so bad. The mom of Sarah is talking to the dad of Jesse. Sarah and Jesse really suit each other, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for now. I want Jesse to focus on getting into college. Ladies, Jesse? I know I'm not supposed to like him because he was kind of a jerk, but I actually enjoy his realism. As a parent, I would tell my child, no offense, sweetie, but f your high school heterosexual romance. If you're not broken up by junior year, there's probably something wrong with both of you. The real reason I see for not liking Jesse's dad is that psychiatric hold of a haircut he has. I'm sorry, I wasn't gonna say anything, but we've seen like three generations of men in this town so far with the hairstyle of a recently sober Stephen King. I did not realize how far gone the fashion was in 2010. And I was the one wearing a corduroy blazer over a hoodie. Fancy boy, what a fancy young boy. Oh, the gossip is that that school nurse is gonna be bringing up the idea of offering condoms and contraceptives to the students at this contraceptive free school. It is the law. The school nurse got the birth control issue on the school committee agenda. Don't ever get through, not on my watch. If the boys in this town wanna have sex with my 15 year old daughter, they can f her p raw like God intended. Anyway, I'll see you at the bake sale. For Sarah's mom, Lorraine, maintaining abstinence only sex education is a big issue when attending these meetings for the school board. Almost as big as her hair is while doing literally everything else, such as meeting the new internet sensation in town while working at a restaurant. I'm like, did you get a blowout this minute? What brings you back? I have a blog, a video blog. 
Oh, I also have a vlog, a vagina monologue. My vagina has thick, cracked skin, like the back of my grandfather's heel. Anyway, today's lunch special is regular soup and all of our desserts are still partially frozen. The mom hears about Sydney's presence being due to the spike in pregnancies. And the mom is like, I don't think that's a good topic for a vlog, blog or whatever. Kids are private business and their in utero happenings are none of your business. It's a family issue and she's like, okay, well, can you just bring me my fucking pie and shut up? The girls are at school talking to a recent graduate from the class above them, I guess. A recently graduated senior. You know those seniors who graduated last year and come back to school to brag about their cool life? It's like that, only there's nothing to brag about because she has a baby and the other girls are like, oh, well, I'm pregnant now. So my boyfriend says there's no way he would miss a chance to watch my baby grow up. We'll be together forever. And that gets Sarah thinking. She's like, hmm. Maybe I should get pregnant to keep my boyfriend out of college, which is like, sweetheart, if you really are thinking that way, you definitely need to talk to someone, but I wouldn't talk to your pilgrim mother cause she will sew you shut. She's like fantasizing about the wedding her and her boyfriend will have. And he's like, I think we should have a big wedding in Kentucky or whatever. And she's like, no, right here at the restaurant. And my mom will make her famous. And he's like, I'm gonna f you now so that you don't say any more stupid and then the next day, seemingly, must be a while later, she comes out of the bathroom stall with a pregnancy test. I don't know why she didn't have to go to the school nurse. And she breaks the news to her friends. She too has a baby in her. Oh my God, I'm gonna have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That expression says, wait though, when I'm a mom, will I still have time to curl my hair three feet wide every morning? Or will I be too busy like curling my baby's hair one and a half feet wide or whatever? Maybe I didn't think this through. Honey, just run with it. You have no option in this town. I find it difficult to follow some parts of this movie because the three pregnant friends in the pregnancy pact are so indistinct and their moms all look the same. Everyone's got red hair. Their houses are dingy. But we are trying to get the sense that maybe this pregnancy thing isn't as glamorous as they thought when they got into it. Cause all the moms who know are pissed. Maybe because you decided to bring another mouth to feed into this house when I can barely feed you. You know, I thought you'd be kind of pumped about getting to be a grandma and everything. Who wants to be a grandmother at 31? 31? That bell-bottom mom is the same age as me, but she just looks a little bit older. Probably because her life is, I don't know, 46% more pathetic than mine. See, kids really do make everything worse. That's why I'm glowing. Also, Danielle, stop stressing out yourself and your pregnant daughter. It's not helping either of you with your condition genitally dark under eye circles. Not in this overhead lighting, hmm. Work smarter, not harder. If your 15 year old daughter is mature enough to get pounded by some stranger from Nebraska, apparently, then she can probably also pour herself some cereal into a bowl. She's like, how am I gonna feed you? It's like, you don't need, literally need to feed her. Feed her some birth control. That's where you can put your grocery store dollars. She works at a grocery store. All of the parents in this movie are like, oh, I'm just a salt of the earth guy who works at the dock. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thora Birch's character, Sydney, is at the school, just wandering in like a trespasser. The principal won't give her the time of day. He's like, I'm too busy. You're, you're just some internet person. The vice principal, John, runs into her and we know they have a history. She explains why she's there and he's like, oh, l let me passive aggressively yell at you. You're doing a, a story on teen pregnancy. Y you. Oof, he said, how could you even know anything about teen pregnancy when you terminated your teen pregnancy that I thoughtfully and prematurely ejaculated into you, slut? And no, Sydney Bloom of teentalknews.net.com has not yet revealed that part of her history to us, the, the audience, or the people who follow her online. But it still seems pretty obvious. That's what he's implying. But just wait, because there will be a plot twist, which is also kind of sad. So don't look forward to it or anything. Just wait. I think it would have been more interesting of a reveal in general if in this first act they showed that Sydney returns to the town and is the like estranged sister of Sarah and her family maybe because of this pregnancy that didn't go as planned and that could contribute to Sarah's feelings around pregnancy knowing that it could get her excommunicated from the family while also helping us like we could follow Sydney and Sarah reconnecting despite tension between Sydney and her parents but that's not what they do they could also have had the older sister, Sydney, be someone who had never met Sarah. She was like that much older and they meet for the first time in the movie. Both of that seems more compelling to me 
And it also is like, oh, this small town, so many secrets, but whatever. Seems like everyone just wants Sydney to get the f out of town. Do us both a favor. Find some other place to do your story. Okay, um, first of all, never tell me what favors I should do for myself because I will 100% do the opposite, just to spite you. In college, somebody told me that I needed to try meditating, so instead I literally smoked crack for the first time. I'm stubborn, what can I say? It's a Taurus thing. Smoking crack, that is. All Tauruses do it. Oh, and another thing, vice president helmet hair. Your button up shirt looks like graph paper. Can I borrow it to make a chart about how many of the girlies in your lunchroom are loaded up with baby sperm? It's not sperm from a baby, it's sperm that becomes a baby. Why is she even allowed in the school right now? She doesn't have a pass, she doesn't have a kid there. Oh, she runs into this random girl with a baby. There are lots of girls going around the school with strollers and this girl is like telling her whole life story suddenly to Sydney and Sydney watches her like bring the baby to the in-school daycare, which is not school run, they make it clear, but a private daycare within the school because it's that prevalent of an issue. We go to the city council meeting where Nurse Cratchit is debating Mama June about the need for pregnancy prevention. The mom is like, we do help our pregnant teens. We have a daycare for them. And she's like, that daycare is already full and you're helping them after they get pregnant. Why wouldn't you just give them condoms? And she's like, because that's gross. And the nurse is like, we need to shut the f up right now. To me, I'm like, wouldn't a city go for the more budget friendly option? Most likely. Listen, I am sorry. I have given almost 150 pregnancy tests this year. When you have to give pregnancy tests to children, I'll talk to you about flexibility. Damn, what's the deal? Is she personally required to pee on each one of those pregnancy tests? Because she's acting like it's a lot of work. I'm just saying, did you know that non-school nurses have to inject Narcan into heart tissue and save the lives of patients who say thank you by smearing poop on them the next day? Can't you just like be cool and secretly staple some extra thin condoms onto the bulletin board outside the drama department? Those girls are the most sexually active. Based on the unnatural shade of red, they dye their hair and unintentionally stain their scalp. I'm talking about hair so much today. Either way, that last part where she's talking to John, she's resigning from school because they are literally not doing anything to help the pandemic of pregnancy. He's like, just be flexible here. And she's like, the f you be flexible by letting some of these f***ing hyper viral little boys wrap it up. Oof, I should have phrased that differently. Well, you can't go back. The news is starting to spread about Sarah's pregnancy. And after the smell of onions makes Sarah throw up, her mom instantly is like, are you pregnant? Cut to the dad, angry fisherman dad. Trust the Gordons, fisherman. Drags Sarah to Jesse's door and starts a yelling about it. Quiet, you. You think you're a man? Come on out here and talk to me like a man. Your son took advantage of my daughter. She's pregnant. So it's my responsibility to become enraged and create traumatizing memories for both of our children. Or I wouldn't be an told dad from Massachusetts who did the same thing 15 years ago. This is not the only time the dad has a hard time reacting appropriately to a sensitive situation. Like who is it helping that you're gonna literally kick a teenager's you're already unemployed, like, don't push it. And Jesse's dad is a lawyer, like, you're really stepping in. Stepping into it. Sarah is like, wait, it's so weird that my life isn't magically fun now that I've destroyed my family system, because the parents are fighting. The mom is like queen of abstinence, and she just assumed it would be safe for her daughter to hang out alone with her boyfriend, and here we are. Was I supposed to keep her locked upstairs in her no, room? No, is that what you I want? don't you want know, to I don't know why up? this happened. Yeah, there are published reports and verified statistics about how abstinence only sex ed only increases unplanned teen pregnancy. What, but was I supposed to read those and understand them? What do you want me to trust and believe science? Like someone who went to Harvard? Oh, hey, this movie really goes into a uh, Jesse is freaking out. He's like, I should have pulled out every time or figured out how to get condoms without anyone knowing. And Jesse's like, why does that matter? We can now get married and you can not go to college. And he's like, you, I wanted to go to college. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sydney is talking to the other confirmed pregnant girls on camera. I guess they don't need permission slips to be published on the internet at this point in history. And those girls are all talking about the circumstances surrounding their sexual activity and eventual pregnancies. My mom wouldn't have cared if I told her that I was doing it. I mean, it's just none of her business. My mom's not, she's, she's kind of wasted all the time. 
Okay, why would you say that on camera? This vagina monologue is going on teenjuicenews.internet website. And you know that's where my mom searches for information to get drunk and yell at me about. You know what, this movie is painting a very unflattering portrait of Massachusetts, which I won't disagree with. I just feel like everyone is dressed a little too nice, like it's back to school season at Kmart. Where are those girls who came to school in Garfield pajama pants, yet still had the nerve to make fun of me for being in a play? Like, okay, your pants were made for an adult adult who had a childhood horse riding accident and thinks they're still six. But sure, calling me gay when I already admitted that is somehow a better drag. I hate it here. I'm doing the pizza dough again, it's in my blood. Sydney is talking about pregnancy per usual with a child she doesn't know, and Sarah confides that she is pregnant. Of course, ex-boyfriend from forever ago, John, is watching intently in his study. They have no idea the hardships that they and their babies are really going to face. And I don't understand why they aren't thinking about these things. Because of white privilege. But in 2010, we white people were not aware of that concept, despite communities of color blatantly explaining it to us. Sorry, we sort of needed a fellow white person to say it to us so that we could pretend it was a new thing we discovered. It's sort of our culture. I can't help but notice all of these pregnant teenagers are conventionally attractive white young women from at least middle-class Massachusetts families with devoted parents. It's only painting a picture of the most privileged circumstances that a teen pregnancy might happen in. Like these girls literally have all the suave Max Hold hairspray they could need to try and style their thin, fine, reddish strands of hair. I am really going in on Massachusetts genealogy today. Come at me, Megan. I'm just kidding. I love my home state, but it is weird how it's like, I come from N New Hampshire, but either way, it's like the 13 original colonies, that's like mama, ground zero for literal colonialism. So there's a lot of uh, problematic beliefs of Bruin, as there are in every area of America but these ones have the old buildings to prove it. Suddenly, there are news reporters from the Times calling the families of these pregnant girls and they're like, no comment. And uh, Sydney is getting iced out by all of the school staff. They're like, you need to just leave. We're not into this news information being spread. Jesse is giving um, the cold shoulder to Sarah, probably because his dad is like, we legally need to have her killed. But then the principal, the uh, one I called Bald Eagle, is visited by a New York Times Times reporter wearing a wig, nice wig. And he's like, oh, I have time for the times, of course. Like, again, Sydney is following around these pregnant girls with a camera and some rando girl comes up and asks them if they have condoms because she wants to have sex with her boyfriend. And these girls who are like, oh, this vlogger who thinks that teen pregnancy is such a complicated thing when it's not. If you really care so much, why don't you go buy this girl condoms? And Sydney's like, okay, I will, but you have to come with me, random girl. And I'm just like, what is this scene? Can we have some more, please? She's gonna think I'm about to sleep with the football team. Is that true? If she buys all these condoms, would you think that she's a slut? I don't know, probably. Okay, you're right. It's embarrassing to buy condoms. Yep because you're making a home movie about it and asking this grown man for his opinion on my underage sex life. I thought you were gonna take me into a CVS and buy me a box of Trojans, not barter for loose gas station condoms like some sort of truck stop hookup. The fact that these girls are just like, yeah, I'll be on camera talking about pregnancy. You're gonna what, post this on the internet for the world to see, whatever. As long as you don't tell my ma. Finally, Jesse and and Sarah reunite. I don't know how. And are like, thanks for coming to see me. It's like, you gotta gloss over a lot of stuff in this movie to show me a lot of other shit. But the point is, they missed each other. They really love each other. I want to be real with you. I've been miserable. My, my chest has been hurting. Everything has been hurting. Don't you see? I'm cargo shorts crazy about you. And I'm actually wicked pumped to spend like our lives together. Pissa. But she's like, our baby though. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad said he'll pay for the abortion. And she's like, what? I thought you would just love this thing that I did without telling you. He's like, I, re I wanna go to college. You're ruining my future. And she's like, she holds his face creepily closed and is like, I love you. Don't you forget that. And you better f me on the hood of this car. Oh, so at the school board meeting, Sarah's mom is like, we just need to raise $15,000 to add one more spot to the school daycare. And Sydney is like, I'm sorry, it's 15 grand for one year of daycare for one baby, and you don't wanna just pay 20 cents each for condoms that will prevent any of this from happening? And the mom is like getting argumentative and Sydney shuts it down in the worst way. Sarah is very lucky to have you to help her and her baby. But not all young girls have that kind of... 
wow, you just exposed my family's secret in front of the whole school board after I recited that monologue for you about my Rumpelstiltskin grandpa vag? Bad feminism and not ethical journalism. But from what I understand, you're not a journalist. You're just like posting on some sort of weird independent teen website that you run with your ethnically ambiguous friend. That's right. At home, the mom and dad are discussing the financial issues that are gonna come with having this child. How are we supposed to pay the hospital bills? Maybe just he'll marry her. You know that's not gonna happen. I don't know that. One way or the other, he's the father and they need to contribute. I am not asking them for money. Okay, every time these two have a private conversation, my whole apartment reeks of how depressing it is to be a cisgender heterosexual. After this, I had to find a group of young people and hand out three condoms, two plan B one steps, and one Truvada for prep, just to cleanse the toxic energy out of my aura. Okay, the Truvada for prep was mine. What? I'm a young person. 31 is young. I'm young, you pregnant slut. I'm sorry, I was not using that as an insult, okay? It's actually, in my community, a sex positive compliment. As in, you just got barebacked on the dance floor, you pregnant slut. It's like a badge of honor where I hang out, don't worry. Oh, so, Sydney meets with her ex-boyfriend at a coffee shop to talk about her terminated pregnancy. How she did it without telling him and then moved away right away. He did not want it to happen. He was unexpectedly excited to have the child and she was like, okay, well, you have fun with that. By the way, he now has a wife and two kids, so he wanted to have a family all along, and it's complicated, like, because she obviously advocates for both parents taking responsibility for a child, but in this case, it was only her choice to not carry through the pregnancy. Maybe that could have been our decision. It's my baby, too. In my 16-year-old body. I After all these, it's the same, Mark? <laughs> well, I'd pay. If we had gotten married, you know, we'd be divorced by now. Or deliriously happy, one or the other. Babe, you're the delirious one. Look at the hair color and off the rack clothing style you've chosen. There's nothing happy about it. You literally look like Zac Efron in High School Musical 3. And he was smoking cigarettes at that point in his career. What I'm saying is you're a douchebag and you work at a school. So it would have been a no from me, son. He gets mad and storms off because she's like, I don't regret having no babies. <laughs> you have two babies. So like, why are you still mad about it? Oh, ethnically ambiguous friend calls and is like, did you see the times? They got the scoop on this story and now it's national news. Turn on the TV. Those officials believe that some of the girls formed a pact, an agreement between one another to intentionally have kids. A new development thrust a small Massachusetts town into a very negative light. Okay, well, this is coming from the state that happily embraces the Halloween tourism related to the Salem witch trials. At least this pact amongst young girls was creating life, not having innocent people burned at the stake due to misogyny, Christianity, and racism. So unless Anderson Cooper would like to hop on the 1240 AM track down here from New York and try to get me pregnant, this interview is over. Boom. That was too much. Don't worry. I'm on birth control. The Truvada. You know, look it up. The girls are getting mobbed by cartoonishly large swarms of reporters. Oh, so the, the news for the Times published is like, there is reportedly a pregnancy pact. So that's the first time this accusation is being thrown out that all of the girls plan to get pregnant together, which we know they did, but the mom is like, of course you didn't do this. You're not crazy. Let me be nice to your pregnant is now. You guys have a steep enough hill to climb without me kicking you all the way up. I'm making some milkshakes and give those babies a shot of calcium. So this is what it feels like to be Jamie Lynn Spears. Why do you feel deceptive and generally disliked by the public? Okay, go off banana curls, do you. Also not this movie literally predicting the Britney Spears Instagram post from this year, detailing the jealousy she felt as an overworked teenager when she saw her mom making Jamie Lynn a milkshake while she relaxed watching cartoons. Well, I never got my iced chocolate drink. I stand with you, Brittany. I'm not joking. Sounds like that would have been a super frustrating situation. Very upsetting. Well, I never got my ass chocolate drink. The news makes it clear it has not been confirmed. And the mayor is like, we don't have any evidence of a pact, you know, like, and there never will be. Cause of why would, why would we know that? And everyone in the town is weighing in on this issue. Yes, it is a big deal. But these girls feel a sense of purpose being pregnant. And what are they supposed to do about it now anyway? We could get an abortion. Sorry, I mean, they don't have to, but why is she acting like that isn't an option? This was made before Roe vs. Wade was overturned. That only happened like yesterday, despite what the constitution promises us in this horrible sick country. <laughs> Pizza dough, it's my only escape. 
when Jeremy, my editor, sent me a first draft for this video, he said he liked the pizza dough bit so much he had to do it himself. Here's that clip. <laughs> Once again, Jesse is mad. I'm like, can we stop with the up and down? Like, I don't care about this. I don't care about this. I can barely keep track. Every two minutes in each act, their relationship status changes and his hair looks different. And my dad says I should stay away from you. Why? A lot of people are saying it's true. The pack thing? Well, your dad uses Craigslist to have sex on an old fishing boat with gay guys from Boston who are visiting their family. So we're all getting gossiped about for our shame-based behaviors, right? Seems like. I would be like, mama, our great-grandparents were like literally scalping indigenous people for this land and to get like God clout. The generational trauma haunts all of us, baby. Not just me. Get it straight, hair dye Brandon. But they hug and make up because basically Sarah's like, I would never do a pact like that. Ever. And the girls, the other three are at home smoking <laughs> and fully pregnant. They make these girls look really bad. And they're like, I didn't even want to do this. The pact was your idea. No, it was your idea. So there's dissension in the ranks. The mayor gets on TV and is like, the only news about this pregnancy pact came from the president of the school, Mr. Bald Eagle. And now that we're asking him for more details, he's fuzzy all of a sudden on the details. He doesn't remember saying that. He doesn't remember the conversation at all. So. It's making the, the principal look really bad. I don't know how he found out about this pregnancy pact either. They never made that clear. Would have been nice if one of the girls told the vice principal and that's how, you know, we need to know how he knew the information and it was accurate. Jesse's fighting with his lawyer dad. Oh, and then Sarah's at the gynecology appointment and almost messes up her whole ruse. It takes a while to come to terms with a mistake. I wish everyone quit saying that. It wasn't a mistake. What are you saying? Babies aren't mistakes. They're gifts from God, right? Yes. Yes, poorly timed life ruining gifts that the whole family wish God has never given them. Anyway, are you ready for this OBGYN appointment without further embarrassing me? Because I have some flushable wet wipes in my purse. I'm being really gross. There are vaginas in this episode. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Not talk about it? <laughs> that would let the pilgrims win. A uh, reporter is harassing Sarah's dad on the lawn. And so he gets into a shoving match with him and then Jesse gets involved and they start beating up this reporter. So of course they call the police and are arrested. It's like, you guys are really f***ing with my shit here. I'm trying to have this baby without hair loss and you're like so stressing me out. Control your temper. Now trying to backtrack on this sensationalist story, Sydney gets on camera and is like, uh, we, we're talking about the pregnancy pack, but what we need to focus on is why are so many teen girls choosing to get pregnant? Pregnancy rates are going up all over the country, which is wrong. At the time, it was shown by Planned Parenthood that teen pregnancy rates had been decreasing steadily since the 60s. But whatever you need to sell the story, I guess. Anyway, dad is out of jail. They have legal fees. The lawyer of Jesse's dad is gonna help. Oh, that school board friend asks the mom, Lorraine, to resign based on the pregnant girl you have. And she's like, well, no, I'm not resigning. I'll come in next week and tell you my decision. Sydney and Sarah have a private conversation, yet again, on a doc. They love docs. And she's like, why do you want to make a pact about pregnancy? What You could have made a pact to become rock stars or to go to the same college College, something stupid and pointless like kids should do. And she was like, I just want to be a mom and have kids. Why don't you get that? Like, that's just what I want. And at this point I was like, okay, go off Sarah. There's nothing wrong with that being your ultimate goal in life. But then one of her friends has their baby and she's suddenly like, hmm, interesting news. She had to have like 37 stitches. She must have tore really badly. Tore what? Down there, stupid. John, is the baby okay? I guess put her on an incubator. Oof, okay. I'm glad no one had enough space on their SIM card to record this moment on their Motorola Razor, because it seems like this baby is already gonna have plenty of memories in the future to give it a mental illness without this piling on. I love how Sarah was all in on having a baby until she heard it could kick a hole in her perineum, like Porky Pig when it busts out of that Looney Tunes drum. And then she said, th 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 that's all folks, and got out of that hospital. <laughs> Nervous. That kind of brings us to the realization like, oh, maybe you 
only thought your ultimate dream was to have a baby and a husband because you weren't taught the realities of that existence. You weren't taught about the negatives of it. You weren't taught anything about it. And that's why you're pregnant. So she calls John to be like, let's meet at the restaurant to have a talk. I need to talk to you if you can meet me at the restaurant. I just really need to see you. I'm like totally about to abort mission because I'm looking at some really obvious stock footage of a sick baby that looks like it's covered in cheese. Oh, that reminds me. If you get there first, can you order me a tuna melt? When she shows up at school without permission again, vice principal, what's his f is like, I'm starting to see we be offering more options to help care for these kids. Maybe I was a little narrow-minded. The principal makes an idiot of himself by getting in front of the news and is like, I will not be said that I'm fading in my memory or anything that I don't know what I'm talking about. The Truth is, it's accurate that there was an agreement between some girls to get pregnant at the high school, but I never called it a pact. That's the word the news is using, and I truly don't remember when I said it. It's like, well, then your memory isn't good. He's like, what we need to do is stop hounding the town to try to figure out which girls are pregnant or part of this pact because they should just be able to deal with it privately in their families. And it's like, there's only like three girls I see right now who are pregnant. You should know who it is. I don't know where this idea comes from, but fucking sit Sydney, can't leave well enough alone. She's like, I'll put you on camera, in shadow, we'll disguise your voice. You just need to admit and talk about the pregnancy pack without revealing who you are so that the whole news cycle can move on to something else. But of course she's talking about it right when Jesse and Sarah's mom walk outside. This is the second time that some sensitive information is shouted into the ears of the public because Sydney doesn't know how to, how to act right. So Jesse runs off into the car and is pissed because she lied about not making a pregnancy pack and basically deceiving him into intentionally getting pregnant and ruining his chance at a future. Anyway, the girls all go to a drinking and dancing party. The girl whose 31 year old mom is like pissed about the whole situation, like drops her off and everyone's having a strange relations with their family because of this. Jesse's at the party too and he's just trying to drown his sorrows with his weird friends. Just forget about it. I mean, let's just party. Everyone's having fun. We got beer or kegs. Let's have a good time. Can you tell they got some non-actors to play a few of the teenagers in the movie? Teenage actors tend to have a little too much life in the face and not enough slack-jawed, mouth-breathing mumbliness. Sarah is off to the races in a scene that feels a lot like Mean Girls. There's also another scene where they reference Mean Girls by being like, your hair looks sexy pushed back. So I'm like, okay, we get it. The movie came out two years ago. Where do you think you're going? I love Jesse. So if I'm not granted, I'm gonna go find him. No pregnantica. You're wearing literally your worst outfit in the whole movie. Think of the baby. Not those Bermuda shorts. The three girls who haven't given birth yet, including Sarah, are like fighting basically being like, we were so dumb to do this, that everyone is right. And Sarah's like, no, we weren't. This would all be fine if nobody found out. And they're like, the other girl who had, got pregnant cries all the time and her grandma has to force her to hold the baby. It's like, oh boy, that's a postpartum. She should get some help. But being, and then also the boyfriend hates her. Like her life sucks with the baby, go figure. And uh, at the party, Jesse and Sarah both see each other, but they aren't talking, which just leads to binge drinking. Looks like Loretti's got a stalker. I hope that she has more friends that wanna get knocked up. Okay, that's a weird thing to say about the situation ruining your best friend's life right now. But hey, don't even worry about it. Listen to the no personality in your voice right now. You're not getting anyone knocked up, but you are about to have a knocked cup, which is when I knock that empty cup out of your hands. I'm gonna knock all the clearly empty cups out of these teenagers' hands. I get tagged in a lot of TikToks where people are pointing out obviously empty on-screen cups. And at this point, I'm like 90% sure that I'm the first person on the internet to point that out, ego. So. I'm sorry to anyone who's already bored with that aspect of my brand, but come on. This is some of the most egregious empty cupness that we've ever witnessed. Easy 
there, Sarah. Gulping down all of that extra air could make your baby come out born looking like a mylar balloon. Although then people will think it's your birthday every day. So do, do whatever. The teenage smoking and drinking while pregnant thing is a little much in this movie. Like they're really laying it on. And there is never once like a on-screen thing being like, don't actually do that. Ex later, the doctor says something. But first, Lorraine is yelling at Sarah. No, yelling at the reporter, Sydney, with her huge, perfectly styled hair. You don't eat, you're not a mother. You don't even know what you're doing here. So that encourages Sydney to go on camera and post a video about how I left this town because I got pregnant and decided not to keep the baby. I told my boyfriend that I had terminated the pregnancy, but in reality it was too late and I couldn't. So I gave it up for adoption and got out of town. And so John is like, oh my God, my baby is out there somewhere in the legal custody of someone else. Oh, and she said like the, the boyfriend wasn't in the picture and didn't need to give his permission to put the baby up for his adoption. So whatever, that's the twist. Same results, right? Like no baby in your life. The girls are drinking. And of course, Sarah can't keep her shit straight. Everyone, make sure to check on your quiet, shy friends because sometimes they might be dying of alcohol poisoning. At least we know one thing for sure. Sarah is the main character of the school year, living every day like it's Degrassi Junior High. She's in the hospital. The parents are like, oh my God. And the doctor's like, excessive drinking can lead to birth defects. Make sure your daughter knows that when she wakes up from her coma. <laughs> So the mom is then being nice to her, feeding her yogurt at home. And she's like, I can't believe this happened. She's like, I never felt like I could talk to you, dad, or you specifically about sex because you were so adamant about abstinence and I didn't want to admit that I had these feelings that you clearly never had. I thought there was no way you'd understand. You and dad waited. We didn't wait. What? Each time I was worried sick that I'd turn up pregnant. So you lied. But you wouldn't take me seriously about waiting if you knew the truth. But now you know our secret. Being horny for d runs in the family. It has for generations and it doesn't show any signs of stopping. How's your regular soup? Too hot? After her online announcement of secretly giving up her baby, she meets the boyfriend on a stool <laughs> on the beach. And he's like basically forgiving her. He's like, you were a kid. What can I say? It's like, you should have come to this term like over the last 20 years, whatever. He forgives her, but he is going to look for the son that she gave up so that he can have a relationship with him. Do you want me to let you know if I find him? No. <laughs> We stan a self-assured queen. Sydney Bloom said, what's not clicking? I gave that baby up for adoption because I was not interested in meeting it. Thank you very much. If you manage to find him, you can just, I don't know, write my name on all of his birthday cards from now on, but I don't want either of you talking to me. We get a glimpse into the life of that girl who did give birth and she's like, my boobs are swollen and the baby won't suck the milk out so I have to pump it out and my boyfriend is mad because he's taking a nap and uh, my grandma's watching television. It's like, we get it, you're trash. And the other girls are like, I'm scared too. Maybe I'm gonna give up my baby for adoption. And it's like, ooh, good idea. Sydney put the idea in her head. Then the mom goes in to talk to the school board and she's like, I won't be resigning. I realize now we're not doing enough to protect our kids. And I wanna thank Sydney Bloom. And then the next conversation, Sydney's talking to Sarah and she's like, they didn't fire my mom. They're like, no, they decided that if, what do they say? Like if she could be swayed by a liberal New Yorker like her, then they must be something to it. I, what did she say? If the mom could change the mind of a knee jerk liberal like her, then she should stay on the school board. I don't know what she changed the woman's mind about. I guess getting her to admit that she had an adoption. Anyway, I was like, so not into this movie, like emotionally invested, but this got me. I'm gonna be a good mom. Thanks for being my friend. No, I'm not crying. It's just a stupid movie. Um, uh, you're a witch. I saw her sign the devil's black book. Her, her spirit pokes me with needles in the eye. Get her! Wow, sorry. When I get panicked, you can really tell that I'm from New England. Those roots start to show. They're burning all the witches even if you aren't one. So then we go into an epilogue type of thing where we see Sarah going through the motions of having her baby. It includes being broken up with by boyfriend Jesse, but whatever. 
whatever. She kisses the baby and uh, life goes on. And that's all the babiness that we have to see, woo! What do you guys think of the pregnancy pack? Did you think this story was interesting back in 2008? Did you watch this movie back when it was on Lifetime? Let me know in the comments below. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I've got a premature delivery coming to the needle natal unit. It's a lot, that's a lot of realism. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes and virtual watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for keeping your adoption a secret from me. I will see you next time.